think it's located in the uh, uh, on Buford Highway. It's about a half a mile from North Jew Hills, right next door to Turtle. Special kind of spirit that rises 
than us all. We hear a cry for help, we're there to answer the call. So many things today could use a hand. Your hand, your time, your money, even a bit of yourself. This is what it's like to be functionally illiterate. In there are 27 million Americans like this who need your help. I Volunteer at this number. The only degree I you need is a degree of I caring. Can. I think I can. Look, the Statue of Liberty! I don't feel so good. Where does it hurt? All over. I need lots of fixing. That's going to be expensive. If we ask people to help, they will. Everyone loves me. To help, send your contributions to The Lady, Box 1986, New York, or call 1-800-THE-LADY. It would make me feel a lot better. Keep the torch lit! I love her. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, from Memorial Stadium. Welcome to the uh, prime cable high school game of the week between Tucker and, I mean, uh, Tucker in the red, or Crimson, and Redan in the white. Gene O'Brien here to bring you the action with Adrian Brooks. Adrian, come on in and tell us about uh, Tucker. Okay, we saw Tucker last week. They lost a heartbreaking game to the Clarkson team, if uh, the folks remember on TV, up against uh, another formidable team, the Redan. Raiders, Redan in the white, Tucker in the red. And we had an Whoa. early score right off the bat. Oh, Whoa. very close attempt. First minute of the game, quickly, the lineup for Tucker, I believe. Ray Jarvis in goal, John Sanderford, Chris Ball, Brent Venisa, Gary Lowe. There's a quick corner kick, short. Gil Watson on the turn for. Redan, number five. Gil Watson, the stopper. Quickly Go in midfield. John Coleman, Mike Miller, Paul Gwynn, and Jim Stone. We believe. We believe. All righty. Uh, let me give the Redan lineup real quick here, Adrian. Action is so fast and furious, we don't have time to catch your breath here. Mike Wirtz in the goal. Danny Meyer, the back four. Uh, Peter P uh, Nicolini, Danny Meyer, Gil Watson, Tinker Small, Hampax, Terrell Boyd, Adam Gray, Kurt Armstrong, and the front people, John Hartwick, West Ball, center forward, and Chris Gardocki, number 11. Okay, Take it away, we got two fun players for the uh, Tucker team. It's Jeff Tuffin over and Holy. I believe they switched around quite a bit. Holy's in, in midfield tonight. Number 17. Well, you remember, call last uh, week against uh, Clarkson. Holy, number 17, had a a very frustrating game, Adrian, because they kept marking him and double marking him. Clarkson did. Let's see how he does tonight. Redan knocking the ball out to the right-hand side, back in the midfield. Fast and furious game. Redan already having two or three opportunities to go ahead. Referee calls offside, I think. Okay, our MVP of last week is going to take the free kick. Chris Ball. Number 
six. Fine young player. Yeah, he was our player of the game last week, Crab Ball. Uh, stopper, fine player. Sweeper, rather fine player. Running hard on the right side there for Redan is number 26, John Hartwick. Pumped it out of the back there by goalkeeper Ray Jarvis. Not, not a very good kick. This is a very big game for Redan, Adrian, because there they've won, they've lost a game, and they've tied a game, and they've won five. Clarkson has won, uh, lost none. They're eight and zero. Oh. oh, it's a great one too, right there. That's tremendous. Great to watch things like that on the edge of the box. Referee calls a goal kick. Great stuff from Redan. Redan in the white, white and blue with blue shorts. Tucker in the maroon and uh, yellow. Zero zero with uh, just four minutes into the game. Goal kick played out by Chris Ball. Heads up. Number nine. Who's there? Michael Miller. Mike Miller on there. Mike's got it again. Mike's working hard. Pressed by number 11. That's Chris Gordotti. Chris Gordotti's a left-footed uh, player and an excellent shot. The fans will see something if Gordotti gets a shot off here tonight because he's got an explosive shot. That's Danny Meyer playing in the center, sweeper. Oh, look at this, Adrian. That's West Ball, number two, making a charge. West Ball is the center forward, number two. Yeah, it looks like redan has got three front players. Two out wide and one right down the middle. Yeah, I think he's got Gordotti, number 11, on the left side. West Ball, number two, in the middle. And John Hartwick, number 26, on the right side, Adrian. What's the stats on these uh, three players, Gene? I'll well, give it a view as the, uh, if, you, if you know them. Well, let me see here, Adrian. Let's take Gardaki, number 11. He's a ninth, a ninth grade player. Ninth grade? He's a ninth grade wow. player and a tremendous left footed shot. Good ball knocked into the middle. West Ball is a senior. Excellent player. And there you see the left full back dropping it back to his goalkeeper. Ray Jarvis punting the ball out to the halfway line. Brought down. Redan applying a lot of pressure here tonight. Asserting themselves as being the most dominant team in the first five or six minutes. You know, if you recall last week, uh, the defensive people of uh, Tucker were excellent. Chris Ball, number six, at the sweeper. Venuso, number four, to stopper. Santa for 21 had a great game last week right at the fullback. Yeah, it sure did. And Gary Lowe, number 15, left fullback. So let's see what they do tonight, Adrian. Under pressure. That's Gordaki. Now that's... Uh, that's Armstrong, number 13. Number oh, 31. Good. good tackle there. Heads up ball. We're down soon. They get most of the play in the first early moments of the game. Well, what they're doing, well, Adrian, they're coming off the ball very fast. Fast movement out there. Well, not only that, it's uh, in the game of soccer, it's all individual battles all over the field. You against the opposing player that you happen to be marking. Oh, look at this. A nice. No, oh, oh a great, great defensive effort. play. Great defensive play by number seven, I do believe. Ball's not knocked into midfield. Redan just putting that pressure on. Taking shots from all over the place. Dynamite effort. As I was saying, I think Redan's winning those individual battles at the moment. All over the field, in fact. Somebody once said you've got ten little battles on the field, and if you win those little battles, you'll win the war. That's a great saying, that, Gene. Where'd you find that one? Some English chap told me about <laughs> it. Explained that to me one time, Adrian. <laughs> Back to sweeper number four, Danny Meyer. Ball go in. Knocked out wide. 
You recall number 11, Paul Gwynn, scored last week the Tucker goal in that uh, game against Clarkston. That's Sandifer, number 21. Sandifer again, number 21. Holy on the ball, knocks it out wide to the left-hand side. Who's this? Doesn't quite get it. Good idea, great idea. Holy seems to be playing in deep in midfield. Yes, he is. He's a playmaker. That, well, that might be a good idea because there's no use having him up there. I thought he was totally wasted last week. That's a very candid opinion, Gene. Well, I did. I thought he was he was doubly marked, and as you saw time and time again, triply marked. And if the player's got, if he's in that posture, there's not much point letting him sit up there and just be marked out of the game. He's too good a player. You've got to have his foot on the ball. Can't have his foot on the ball if he's got two people all over him defenders all over him but he's got more space now down in the in the middle field he sure will Tucker going with two front players and um, four midfielders cramping the midfield up we then however got three midfielders and three front players so certainly two different styles here tonight Okay, a throw in from the right-hand side all the way down the line. Don't quite get through. Ball's knocked deep to number four, Danny Meyer. Puts his foot on the ball. Back to the goalkeeper. Smart move from the pressure out there. You know, Adrian, we've said it so many times. I you know, go ahead. I love seeing things like that, where the player comes and collects the ball off the um, goalkeeper. Shows he has a little composure and confidence back there coming out with the ball. A nice run. Here's Danny Meyer back again to the goalkeeper. I like players who want the ball from the goalkeeper. You very rarely see this. That's Kurt Armstrong for Redan. This is Adam Gray on the move. See how fluid he is. Nice fluid look at a ball. Oh, that sort of depth. Oh, driving shot. Very good idea. Driving shot by West Ball. Quite a few of these uh, players on uh, on television tonight or on view tonight are um, highly sought after by yeah. colleges around town and exactly, all over the nation. You're exactly right, Adrian. I'm looking down there and I see a number of uh, college coaches down there looking these boys over. And it gives them a great opportunity to show their wares. And uh, you know, and I know, Adrian, that at least two players have gotten, uh, have gone to soccer, uh, to a college uh, for soccer on the basis of tapes of our games we done last year. So we're very pleased to be part of the whole scheme of getting these boys opportunities in college and play soccer, uh, uh, soccer in college. Here's Chris Ball, Sandifer, Sandifer again. Andy Kimball with a throw in. Goalkeeper Ray Jarvis comes out to collect. Interesting change now for Redan. <coughs> Hartwick, Ball, Gordachi are out in the front line. We got Henderson, Allen, and Chadwick. Andrew Chadwick. Something's going on there on the field. I don't know what's happened. The throw in, took a throw in. Referee was right on it. Flag up sandwiched, I believe. Tripper Allen is a, a ninth grader out there playing center forward uh, now for Redan, a fine young player. Oh, that's oh, a great nice. Oh, a great opportunity a nice effort. run in. That's a tremendous that effort. Was a nice run in there by Chadwick. Nice run in by Chadwick. And that was Adam Gray, I believe, took the shot. Chadwick to Gray. Great, great shot. Dynamite cross coming in there. First time shot on goal. Yeah, that was Chadwick. That's 
a familiar name, is it not, uh, Adrian? It sure is. Chino Brewing. David uh, Chadwick being the former chief, uh, chi uh, coach of the Chiefs and the Generals here in the Atlanta area. Andrew Chadwick, number 16, is his son. He's now playing outside left. Cripper Allen is playing center forward, number 29. And Henderson, number 28, is on the far side. So they changed the whole front line, Adrian. Well, they certainly have the players over on that side to do that there. That's a great ball by Holy. This is uh, Gwen. That's a Casanova, but Danny Myers intercepts. Nice, r nice drop to Chadwick. Nice back build up here. Back to Chadwick again. Allen to Chadwick. Very hard to see the numbers on these Redan shirts, Adrian. Yeah, it sure is from way up here. They uh, sort of blend in. With so, so fans, bear with us here because the, the numbers are gray almost in texture and the in color rather. They blend in with the white shirts of Redan. So please forgive us if we miss call a few names here once in a while, but we'll do the best we can. This is Meyer. Having plenty of time back there doing the sweeping. Oh, bad bounce there for the sucker player. That's Henderson on the run. Fast. And that's an attempt by Lowe to strip him of the ball, but Henderson and is successful. The sucker player got back very, very fast there. He was beaten, well beaten, and uh, he quickly recovered. Okay, a goal kick. Who's taking a goal kick? Chris Ball. Chris Ball, number six. Must be wide on the right-hand side. Lucky for Ho Lee. That was Adam Gray. Well, that's Keep mixing up Armstrong and Adam Gray. Armstrong is on the left side. That was Kurt Armstrong. Number 31. Another good player. Comes from a long line of soccer players, Adrian. Mm -hmm. Armstrong brothers, yeah. They mm -hmm. seem like there's Armstrongs and Lee Dan forever. This is Kurt Armstrong, number 31. Smartly back to the goalkeeper, Ray Jarvis. That was Jim Stone knocking it back to Jarvis. Missed time ball, first time ball there. Danny Meyer comes over and wins it. Very strong sweeper back there, coming out. Harold Boyd, number 12, over there on the right side in the action for Redan. We Twi have quite a few substitutes, substitutes over on that side. Oh, uh, they've got an army on that team, uh, Adrian. They must have 40 or 50 players on that uh, on that uh, Redan team. Well, and especially in contrast to the Tucker uh, bench over here, they have uh, three or four players sitting on it. So. Yeah, Tucker have about four subs and Redan have about 24, 34, somewhere around about that. Punch it out. Great. Mike Wirtz is in the net for Redan. Long punt. Oh, tremendous turn on the ball. Oh, a great, unlucky, great idea. Had the defender going the wrong way. Jarvis punting the ball out. Oh, it's Chadwick on that push forward. Chadwick is a very talented player, Adrian. He's got a lot of skills and very aggressive player. Now here comes another army of substitutions for... Uh, Reed in. You see them all coming in, Adrian. About four or five or six of them coming in. It's very, very difficult to keep up with these with these substitutes. Friends, we're going to do the best we can with the poor numbers, poor visibility in the numbers and the frequent substitutions. We'll do the best we can. But I guess that's one way to keep those legs fresh, Adrian. It sure is. Friends, if you're enjoying these games, by all means, drop a note over there to Prime Cable, 2818 East Ponce de Avenue, Decatur, 30030. Put them attention to Ann Landers. She's the same name as the lovelorn lady on the, on the newspapers. Tell her she's the executive director over there. Tell her how much you enjoy these games. She's very supportive of soccer and very instrumental in keeping this on the, on the channel. So drop a letter and tell her you're enjoying this great game. Pace is great. Yeah, it's a very good pace. Holy, I believe, number 17 on the ball right now. Oh, taken away. 
stripped by Gil Watson, number five for Redan, a very aggressive, hard-nosed stopper. Still very strong on the ball there. Won the ball very cleanly. All right, we got uh, ball number two back in, center forward, Godaki number 11 back in. We got Bacon number 30 in. Hartwick number 26 in. Redan, this Redan team seems very, very strong, very formidable team, Gene. Yeah. Got great depth. Strength all over the place. Great depth. As I say, Adrian, as we go along, we try and pick them out for you while you do this excellent commentary oh, on the action. Golden opportunity there. Ball bounce down. The Tucker player. All right. That's the left fullback low over there. Or rather, the, the stopper, Brett Venuso. Number four, clearing the ball away for Tucker. Push into space. Nice cross coming over. Ho Lee brings the ball down. Looks up. Gil Watson on Ho Lee. Gil Watson, number five. Ho Lee jukes him out of the ball. Goes forward. Wants to Turns try and beat him again. again. I think oh, yeah. taking too much time. That ball was meant for Casanova, but stolen away by the left fullback. Looks like Tinker Small out there. Okay, back to play. Colin Cassidy, number 21, is playing right half back for Redan right now. You know, Redan are using these wings very, very effectively. Looking up and pushing the ball out wide on many, many occasions. The center, the center forward and the opposite wing is crashing in. I'm sure they'll get some success with these things tonight. Gil Watson, by the way, seems to have drawn the responsibility of uh, marking one of their most important players is uh, Ho Lee. Well, a number of occasions we've seen him clash. Ho Lee is now out, uh, <laughs> headed out, uh, uh, I guess, to take a rest. I think Gil Watson went with him. Now, Watson is still in there, <laughs> number five. I'll tell you about Watson. I've had Watson play for me for a number of years. Watson is one of the best man-on-man -man markers there is out there. He hey, is absolutely tough. aggressive. Gives no quarter, asks no quarter. Very, very aggressive player. Good man-on-man -man marker. In the youth league, when we used to play against Rod Underwood, you remember him, the set west of Cab star, the sign that uh, to go to Furman? Sure. We used to put him on Rod Underwood. You talk about a great battle between two players. It was tremendous to see Underwood and... Uh, Gil Watson go head to head. And he's doing the same thing now with Holy out here tonight and doing a good job. As a matter of fact, like we say, Holy is out of the game. Pick it up, Edwin. Thank you, Gene. Okay, we're back to uh, free kick, I believe, the referee call. Free kick. Could be a dangerous situation here. Let's see what Redan is doing. Man to man marking on the 18 yard line. Probably an offside trap going to be pulled here, I think. Adrian, what Maybe I not. No. Very Look dangerous. At this. Oh, a great, great charge in by the Tucker player, but it was a high boot. The referee didn't think so, Jake. No, it was a high boot by the Tucker player. I almost took off that Rita Redan goalie's head, but it was a good surge by the Tucker player, and the referee right on the mark calls a free kick for Tucker. Number nine for Tucker, Mike Miller. Good nice. movement. At least Mike's moving. That's the key. He sure was. You know, sometime before this game is over, let's get one of these college coaches up here and introduce him to the folks and get to see what he has to say about this game and, and the caliber of the game and, and so on and so forth. What do you say, Adrian? I think we should do that. All right. Well, we'll keep an eye out here and see if we can get one up here before this game is over. All right. Redan right on the right-hand side. Plenty of room. Favoring that right hand side quite a bit. Comes into the middle. Oh, what a goal! Tremendous goal! That scored Docky, who I just told you about, Adrian Brooks, has got a powerful left foot. What a tremendous bang! A smash right into the net. Giving Ray Jarvis, that fine goalkeeper of Tucker, no chance whatsoever. 17 minutes to go in the game. Gardocky scores for Redan and puts Redan ahead one to nothing. Describe the action to him, Adrian. A fine taking goal. Build up over there on the right-hand side one more time. Cross came over. 
and uh, he took it first time on the volley. Kept the ball low and hard, and you'll beat the goalkeeper most of the time. Gardaki is a ninth grader. Ninth grader. Gardaki was one of four of these Redan players that went to the southern region for a tryout for the national team, which would eventually go to Red China, this uh, mainland China, whatever, uh, in July. He and Tripper Allen, Josh Garnet, and Chadwick, all from this team, all freshmen. What about that, Adrian? That, that really is something tremendous. We're going to be seeing a lot of Redan down the road. And, of course, Gardaki was also a member of the great Liverpool Red 1970 team that won the gold medal in Tampa. So he's got a great uh, background, as does uh, Tripper Allen, of course, and Carney and Chadwick, as far as the youngsters in this team are concerned. Tucker are now faced with a uh, somewhat of a dilemma. They were hanging on very well. Although the game by no means is over, they've got to sort of change up a bit. Redan certainly has been dominating play throughout, although they have had a number of opportunities. Redan must keep playing. There's a tremendous ball out here on Gardanti the left-hand side. Again. Watch this left-footed shot if he gets it away. Look oh, at what a great ball. cross. Lovely touch. Oh. A powerful shot by Adam Gray, number six. Powerful shot, but a little high and not so handsome after all. Hey, some fine crosses coming in here. Obviously been working on it quite a bit from both sides. Dangerous crossing. Crossing that goalkeepers have absolute nightmares with. Bending away from him. I've always liked these balls coming in from the side, Adrian. I think they're very exciting balls. They're exciting to watch. Yeah, and particularly if you get a fellow with a nice touch, they can put a nice bend on it as it comes across, you know? A bender. Bender. All right, throwing down the line. He did well to keep that in there. Just like you used to do, Adrian, when your feet and your legs were in shape. They still are, Gene. Thank you. Ah, <laughs> Gardaki with the ball for Redan. Another bender across the field to the far side. I'm afraid if he didn't win that, there's a player right behind him. Tucker still battling away. Now, where has it got Holy now, Adrian? Do you see him? Or is he on the bench still? No, Holy's out there. Midfield. Playing center midfield. He and Gray, I guess, are matched up. Gray number six, Holy number 17. Here's number 18 coming in for Tucker. Blaine Vaughan. Blaine Vaughan. Coming out, I believe, is number 11. That's Paul Gwynn. Paulie Drury having no. a word with him when he came out. That was not Paul. That was number 15. Tucker coming out. Gary Low. Gary Low. Gary Lowe's daddy is a, is a coach, a classic league coach in the Cab Youth Soccer Association, been involved in soccer for many years. Adrian, we've said it so many times. These boys that start that shine out here in these high school teams, they've all had a great background in youth soccer, classic league soccer. Gary, here's ball. Ooh, this is a over tenacious attempt to win the ball there, I think. That was Chris Ball, number six, the sweeper. He was our game of the uh, player of the game last week. Chris Ball. Fine young player. Fine young man. Fine young man, too. That was a great interview. Yes, sir. Very classy individual. That was Mike Miller, number nine, for. Tucker not. We're then knocking the ball around really, really well. Very fast movement of the ball by, by Redan. 14 minutes to go in the half. Redan leading one to nothing. Redan in the white. Tucker in the crimson. You're watching Prime Cable's boys high school soccer game of the week and an exciting game you're watching. Oh, the sweeper for... Oh, look at this, number... Back to goalkeeper, Ray Jarvis. Sanifer, right full back. Got a few changes now for Redan in the defensive unit. You got number one, Harris is the sweeper. And right full, I mean left full back, you've got Pat Connick. Pat Connick, he also is a freshman. Freshman. Pat Connick. Here 
this sleeper back here has a lot, a lot of composure. Number one. Yeah, this is Harris. I, I saw him play a great game uh, against um, Lithoni about three weeks ago. He played sweeper then. I thought he was very good. Harris, nice, solid player. You know, it's very entertaining to watch this team where they build it up from the back. Very few teams I've, I've noticed in, in high school uh, have that much confidence in the back players. We also have another freshman in at right fullback and Josh Carnet on the right side. So we got freshmen all over the place on this. That was Carnet, that was miss kicking there. That was uh, freshmen all over the place on this Redan team. Boy, that sure speaks well for the future for Redan, doesn't it? Yeah, it sure does. Carnet was also on that team, that regional gold medal winning team, like I say, and Connick too. God, Redan has got all of it. It seems like they, they have a a multitude of excellent players coming up. Well, 12 minutes to go in the first half. Redan 1, Tucker 0. It's Friday night here in DeKalb County at Memorial Stadium. Beautiful night for soccer. Adam Gray. Redan in the white, Tucker in the maroon and the yellow. Gerdaki. Gerdaki down the line. Oh, that's oh, a tremendous nice run. Oh, what a great... Jockey with that big left-hand shot, and I'll tell you, some defender felt that one, Adrian. It was very small where he dummied that, that ball. Let it run on. Fine, very tremendous. Fine. Well, that's, that's indicative of the youth play leagues. That's the kind of stuff they learn in the youth leagues and the classic leagues. And they, You see, they stand out. We've said it so many times. We've, we've seen some teams, high school teams, where the kids, where the they only play in the, during the soccer season. The difference is manifest. Mm -hmm. Once again, we're going to see a long ball coming in here. 50 50 ball to win this. Chris Ball, up she comes. Bent forward, Gurdaki again. You know, just making a comment about the various styles of these two teams. Redan always comes out the back with the, with the ball. I've mentioned it a number of occasions already. As you just saw, Tucker, oh. they don't come out of the back with a soccer ball. They, they knock the ball up and it's a 50-50 ball. Whoever wins it. Redan just won it and brought it right back to them. We literally have almost a new team in there now because I, I counted about seven or eight new players coming in. And, of course, you've got to realize, and Coach Harold Henderson of Redan, no doubt, is thinking about tomorrow, Saturday, when he has to play uh, Stone Mountain. So, there's... That's uh, Paul Gwynn passing out to his left half back there, Adrian. No doubt he's thinking about resting these players as much as he can, Adrian. What do you think about that idea? Uh, I don't know so much about that, sir. They have so many players. I think you've also got to be aware of allowing players to, to get into the flow of the game and, and show him what they can do. I guess you have an argument on both sides, really, uh, Gene. All right, Adrian, let's see here. This is a free kick to uh, Stone, uh, to, uh, <laughs> to Redan. Stone Mountain, Stone Mountain is my <laughs> team in the sense that my, my daughter goes there and I keep mixing. Oh, look at this. Good save by Ray Jefferson. Oh, oh tremendous. Finish. Great, great, great goal by number 17, Henderson. Right on top of the play. Very, very smart. Goalkeeper drops the ball, and the player standing around, cherry picking, as we call it. Very smart, though. Well coached. Got to be on top of the play all the time on things like that. Goal scorer was Brad Crouch, I believe. Brad Crouch with an assist, I believe, from Adam Gray. Friends, we have to reiterate again, bear with us because there's so frequent changes and substitutions, it is very difficult to keep up with these players. Well, it was Gray with the assist and number 17 scored a goal, we do believe. Long ball down into the corner. Oh, that's tremendous. These, these fast Redan players are really putting the Tucker players to the test. That's quite a mouthful, Jay. Well, I think they are because they're moving so fast and Tucker's trying to keep up with them. And I think you made a good point a moment ago. Tucker's only got four substitutes. And with this pace, before the night is over, there's going to be some very tired legs on that Tucker team. I think so. Just in sheer numbers. Ball's knocked out wide. Good tackle. Adrian, we're going to 
double check on that goal. I, I'm not quite sure if it was 17 or if it was Marcus Henderson. We, we're going to have to check on that with the excitement of the moment. We'll check into it and tell the folks. In any event, it was a nice goal, very opportunistic goal. All right, we're down to eight minutes in the first half. Score is three nothing to the Redan Raiders in the white. And Tucker has not scored on the uh, evening. They're in the maroon and yellow. Hey, looks like a long throwing coming in. Oh, look at this. Oh, a little collision there with Ray Jarvis and the, I mean, uh, Wirt and the incoming uh, Tucker player, Mike Miller. Chadwick on the ball. Nice piece of footwork. That's a nice ball pushed through. Oh, look at this footwork. Oh, unlucky. Driving shot over the bar. Love to see attempts like that go in from, you know, 18, 20 yards out, Gene. There's very exciting goals if they're on target and do happen to fly in. Driving shot by, by number 12, Carol Boyd for Redan. Right half back. All right, we got center forward now is Tripper Allen, number 22. There's a ball to Tripper Allen on the move. Chadwick on the outside gets there a little ahead of the play. Chadwick again on the ball. Adrian, oh, look at the lovely. <laughs> Too many just beats and sends it right across the mouth of the goal. Saved by the Redan player. Oh, what a goal! Booming shot by Chadwick! No. Armstrong, I take it back, number 31. They're all alike out there, these young players, as they're flying around the field. A booming shot from number 31, Kurt Armstrong. Oh, what a goal. Describe it to the folks, Adrian Brooks. Now, there again, a, a cross coming over and a first-time shot on goal. Pretty much identical to the one that went over the bar earlier on. Tremendous taking goal. Keeping his body over the ball and keeping the ball down. Goalkeeper didn't have much of a chance. If he did, I think it'd be knocked out, saving that one. <laughs> All of a sudden, it's three to nothing. Redan. Powerful team. Redan. Powerful team. All right, holy. Nice ball inside to number nine, Mike Miller. There's a lot to be said about this Redan team. They're a very, very strong team, but I think on sheer numbers alone, they they really are, really are a formidable team. That's Paul Gwynn sending it up the field. You know, to show you to show you the 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 power of Redan that you've been talking about, Adrian. Up until this point, Redan has had 12 shots on goal, and Tucker won. And that is a tremendous pounding that Tucker defense is taking. And I think as the game wears on, especially now that the score is 3 nothing, uh, you know, a coach turns to his bench and looks at uh, Tucker's bench and sees only two players sitting on there. And these players are going to get tired. They're out there chasing a, a new player every uh, five or ten minutes. Yeah, it, it does get... Uh, Redan, however, you know, they can chop and change all over the place. So. And it's Tripper Allen dropping the ball back. It's intercepted, though. Oh... Got a new goalkeeper in for uh, Redan. Stokes Patterson is in the net for Redan. We've got to thank our spotters here tonight for the great job they're doing keeping track. Of. That's uh, Chris Ball. Oh, that's tremendously. Uh, oh yes, Chris Ball. I like that. Great shot. I saw him in the game against Lithonia take some great cracks, some great free kicks, and score a couple off them. They were good. He's got a great shot, great free kick. got a player down, Mike Lee, but I think he's all right now. He's a Mike Man, he's player well. What a nice run by that Redan player that time. Just under five minutes to go, and Redan pressing. Holy on the ball right now. Holy beats his man quite well. Knocks it down wide. Referee gets in the way. Holy again, a lovely, uh, Holy with the ball right now, lovely piece of 
work, footwork. If I have any complaint about Holy, I think he holds onto the ball a tad too long. Adrian. He must have just heard you, Angie. Pardon me? He <laughs> just played a first time ball, he must have heard you. Four minutes to go. Three to nothing. Play down injured. Well, it's another player down injured, Adrian. Mike Lee, number 13, down again. Mike Lee's been playing sweeper. One of three or four sweepers. Every time you turn around, there's a new sweeper in there for Reed and There's Mike Lee. I gotta believe Mike. that third goal that we uh, just scored, Gene O'Brien, is one of the best, better goals that we've seen. It's got to be put into our file for goal of the year award. Yeah, I think our director might put that down in his memory bank. But you got look at you got Mike Lee, 13 playing sweeper in this game thus far for Reed End. Danny Meyer, number four, has played sweeper, and number one Harris has played sweeper. What? Isn't it nice to have that kind of depth, eh? Very much so. Richie. Chris Paul chasing the ball. Is he going to win it? Yes. Poor clearance, though. Here's Fripper Allen running. The outside left is running. Look at this ball. Oh, Jarvis goes down and makes a nice save from a hard running right winger. Redan right winger. <laughs> what a fine run. What a great courageous save by Ray Jarvis. You got Connick now playing sweeper for uh, Pat Connick. For the fourth or fifth sweeper for Reed Ann tonight. Playing sweep for Reed Ann and Richie Fush in at left fullback. Oh, that's well oh, hit. What a that fine is. shot. I like these Reed Ann players. That was uh, young Andrew Chadwick taking that shot from the outside. Oh, what an, what an explosive team Reed Ann is. I like some of these Reed Ann players. They're not, they're not afraid to have a, a, a go on goal from, uh, you know, 20, 25 yards out. I have no quarrel at all with a player to take that shot when he gets inside the 18 and 20 yard area there. Kids this age, Adrian, seems to me should be able to score from that point. Two minutes and a half left. Three to nothing. Redan. Tremendous power shown here tonight by Redan all over the field. Holy. No, no Paul Gwynn. Paul Gwynn, number 11. Holy is 17 and Paul Gwynn is 11. Sometimes he get the numbers mixed up. Nice run here. Good overlapping run back into midfield. Oh. Back again. Knocked out of bounds. No. Save. Just save. That's 21 stand for playing a tremendous courageous game. Right fullback number 21 for Tucker. Here he is throwing the ball in. You know, Sandifer had a good game last week, uh, Adrian. Yeah, he sure was. And he's playing a courageous game. He's getting battered off from all sides, but he's hanging in tough. He's hanging in strong. Down the line and out of bounds. Number 26. Who's the referee tonight, G? Ed Thomas, the veteran referee Ed Thomas is one of them. And the other referee tonight is Jack Wynn. Okay, thanks, Gene. Back to play, a minute to go in the half. Ball is bouncing around again. Tucker trying to string something. Played up front, well, dummy it over. This is Tripper Allen, being followed by Brett Venuso, number four. Four on 22. 22 is Allen. Number four is Brett Venuso for Tucker. And here comes the throw-in. Boy, it's hard to keep up with these players. They're running all over the place, and they're coming in and out so fast. Looks like Holy on the ball right now. He gets bumped a little bit. Did you tell me that I have the referees wrong, Adrian? Uh, I don't really know, Gene. I think I may be in error on the referees. They were listed for the game, but apparently didn't. They made a switch in the last moment. We'll get the referees for the folks if that's important. The game's the thing, anyway. The game's the thing. That's right. Battle in there in midfield. A great ball knocked out wide. All right, Fred. Got a rush. There's only 
10 seconds to go, let's see what they do with it. Cracked on goal. Oh, I'm gonna tell you something, this is gonna be a great Redan, Clarkson, Lithonia, they're all bunched together as we go into the final two weeks. What do you have to say about that first half, Redan? It was an entertaining game. I, uh, very hard to uh, follow Redan. Three tremendous goals, they've really strung a lot together fact that they have so much depth they're running players in and out you know maybe they are looking tomorrow for a very big game uh, i don't really know soccer on the other hand they go into the locker room three nothing down and wonder what they're going to do in the second half to, to get back in this game what would you do if you were well, the second coach let's face it and let's be candid about it tucker is a fine team and a nice talented team but they don't have the depth they don't have the, the sheer numbers they're out in numbers Harley Brewery's got a hard job when he goes into the... He's going to have to go in there and get this team fired up. All right, friends. First half ends three to nothing. Favor Reed and we'll be back shortly for the second half. Ladies and gentlemen, the champion of the world. Hey, champ. The Surgeon General has reported there is a direct link between smoking and heart disease. We know that you can live without it. But can you honestly say you can live with it? Think it over. I'd rather quit and fight heart disease. Smoking can really knock you out. The American Heart Association. We're fighting for your life. Parker, just looking over your work. You know, I usually don't go with freelancers, I don't know, and I never heard of you, but uh, I was in a bind, so I thought I'd give you a shot. Wow, these are really fantastic. How'd you like to sign up full time? You took a chance on me, I'll take one on you. Everybody deserves a chance to make it on their own, and there are things you can do to help, like National Urban League. America's search for peace must take us to tables like this. And tables like this. That's why thousands of young Americans will soon be traveling to other nations International Youth Exchange. Their goal? To help bring the world together, one friendship at a time. For information on costs, programs, and financial aid, write this address. Twenty million people, like Joyce Edwards, have better things to do than wait at home for their government check. They have direct deposits the smart, safe, and easy way of automatically depositing their Social Security or other government checks. Good to eat. For that kind of peace of mind, ask for it wherever you have a checking or savings account. Oh, thank you. Direct deposit for 20 million people with money in the bank. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Memorial Stadium. A beautiful night here for Prime Cable, the second half of Prime Cable's high school soccer game of the week. Tremendous game here. We're seeing tremendous power from this Redan team in the white, leading three to nothing here at the half against Tucker in the Crimson. Adrian Brooks, what do you think these coaches told these young athletes at the half? I don't know, but Redan are right back out on the field and raring to go. I think Tucker is, uh, you know, they're regrouping and trying, going to try and get themselves back in the game. Very hard against a team as, such as Redan. Very formidable uh, task. Well, let's see what they can do. Adrian, I know, I've known Harley Drury, coach, head coach Harley Drury for years, and Harley's a very competitive fella, and I'm sure he told these people in there that, by golly, let's go out there and, and, and get after him and, and make a game out of this because he's a proud man, and his players, I'm sure, will, 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 will be aggressive and get out here and give us a good second half. Yeah. Three to nothing at the half. Lee Dan leading. leading. Entertaining first half. Tucker going from right the left. Tucker in the maroon and yellow. Redan in the white and blue. All right, Adrian, pick up the action as the second half begins. Score three nothing to Redan. Ball's bouncing around in midfield. That's Paul Gwynn, our goal scorer from last week for Tucker. L looks like we're starting off with the same basic uh, starting lineup uh, that Redan started with. Danny Meyer in the sweeper, Gil Watson up there, stopper. Uh, Gordaki on the left side. West ball, center forward. John Hartwick 
on the other wing, Adrian. Adam Gray, center midfield. Pretty much the same team he started off with. That's Gil Watson slamming the ball down the field, intercepted. And surprisingly, Tucker's playing exactly the same way as they started. Uh, That's Harold Boyd, number 12 for Reed, and pushing the ball across the field. This is Paul Gwynn, number 11 for Tucker. Adam Gray. Oh, a nice move by Gray. You know, Adrian, this pace is still continues. There are the fans. You see some idea of the crowd we had here. We have here tonight. It's just a great crowd on a beautiful night here at Memorial Stadium. Probably the biggest crowd we've had uh, this year thus far. Uh, Avian, what do you say? Tremendous crowd. Very enthusiastic too. Got a lot of youngsters down here too in their shirts and their little soccer shirts, and they're all here watching their high school heroes. And I like to see that. I like to see these young youngsters come out here. And great promotion by Dale Terry, and of course the. The school, the Cab County School Administration cooperated in getting all these kids in here for free for this the game tonight. It's just nice. All right, Adrian, pick up the action. All right, we're going to throw him for Tucker. Holy on the ball. Knocks it out wide to the right-hand side and goes out of bounds. Quickly, Redan takes a quick throw in all the way down the line. Oh, nice ball down the side, and there's the Nuso clearing it out. Referee calls an obstruction. Adam Gray on the ball for Reed and about to take a kick. You know, Adrian, we got 240 youngsters from the Cab Youth Soccer Association here tonight. I beg your pardon, 240 young players as guests of the DeKalb School and Soccer Boosters Club. Ooh, quite a turnout. Ah, uh, yes, a nice promotion. Well done, Dale Terry deserves a lot of credit for pushing this project and very good. Redan seemed to be pressuring all over the place. Yeah. That harassing was every corner of the field. That's number 14, uh, Stone, for Tucker. Pulling a foul or free kick. Chris Ball taking the kick for Tucker. Chris looks up the field and goes out of bounds. Redan. Quick throw and ice this thing right down the line. Two or three players wanting the ball. Holy goes up for it and wins it. Maya to come over and cover, as usual. like a breakaway. Redan leading three to nothing. Goals by Henderson, Armstrong, and Gerdaki. Probably see some sort of set play set up here. Unless the ball is just pumped down the middle. Hopefully someone will knock it on. Looks that way. Oh, there, there it is. A beautiful oh. play. You can see the uh, redown player was very smart to stay out of bounds. He looked like he was going to be offside. Plays a quick free, uh, quick corner kick. Goalkeeper job is out very quickly. There's some smart things being done by these redown players. Good coaching. Well, you've got Coach Harold Henderson for redown, a fine coach, a veteran coach. Harold's been around uh, many years. And, of course, you've got Harley Drury, whom I spoke about a moment ago. Harley's been around since the year one, it seems. He's a fine coach and used to coach in the youth years ago. And, of course, he's been coaching at uh, Tucker for, I think, the last, oh, at least 10, 12 years. Adrian, we're pleased to have with us in the booth tonight uh, Dr. Oren from the principal of uh, Redan. Dr. Oren, thank you very much for dropping by. What a powerful, impressive team you've got out here tonight. Yes, it's, <clears throat> it's really a pleasure to watch these young men play. I tell you, the student body is uh, giving a good deal of support tonight, and um, we're just very happy that they're doing as well as they are. They've, they've got another big game coming up tomorrow night, so I just hope to save some of it for them. Well, that's right. You're tied with, I think, there's Clarkston, Redan, a great shot there by Redan forward. You've got Clarkston, you've got Redan, and you've got Lithonia. So you've got three teams fighting for two spots. Right. We were... Um, we lost to Clarkson earlier. I think we tied Lithonia. So the game tomorrow night with Stone Mountain is just exceptionally big because uh, another loss would, uh, would put us in a pretty bad spot, I think, as far as the playoff picture is concerned. That's exactly right. And, of course, uh, Dr. Oren, not only do you all have tremendous athletic programs over there, but you've got a fine school academically, too. Yes, we're very proud of our students academically as well as on the athletic field. 
you mentioned uh, Coach Henderson a minute ago. I think that's the secret, really, that we have. We have excellent uh, teachers, excellent coaches, good leadership all the way around. And I think that uh, the young people at Redan are very fortunate to have the type program that we have. And, of course, that's credit to the coaches and the teachers there. Well, I'll tell you another thing, Dr. Oren, as we watch the action here in front of the Tucker Gold, nice day by Jarvis. You've got a fine man, a fine, decent man in Bill Brock, too, who's your head coach of the girls. Right. Bill Brock has been um, <clears throat> at Redan for several years and, of course, has, um, has threatened to retire several times. But each year we ask him to come back and do one more year for us. He's been willing to do that. And he always does a great job. And this year is certainly no exception. Dr. Oren, thank you very much for dropping by and chatting with us. We had the pleasure of uh, the principal from Tucker on a little earlier this evening, and it's, we, we really appreciate, taking it, appreciate you taking the time coming by and speaking to our viewers and telling us about your fine school. Thank you very much. Back to play, then. Uh, score is still 3 nothing here at uh, Memorial Stadium. Redan in the white. Tucker in the uh, maroon and yellow. Referee calls a corner kick. Probably look for a real quick corner kick. Oh, what a goal. Oh, what a great goal. Oh, what a shot. Quick corner kick. Ball played hard and low across the near post. Someone running right in. That was number 26, Hardwick. Hardwick, number 26, Redan, coming through like a flash and smashing, literally smashing that ball into the net. 4-0. Well taken, Amen. goal. Hard and low. Hard and low. Tremendous. Nice coaching. Uh, no coaching comes into that. Quick uh, corner kick. A lot of the free kicks that you've seen so far have taken very quickly. Took have been uh, maybe a tad little slow getting back to recover. You know, it's 4 nothing. 32 minutes to go in the second half. You know, as a coach, Adrian, particularly for a Redan coach, he's got to wonder and hope that his team does not leave all of its intensity and its scoring power on the field tonight because he does have that big game with, uh, with uh, Stone Mountain tomorrow. Very big game. But I think there's enough power, enough scoring power in this uh, Redan team to go around. Okay, let's see if Tucker can get back into this. They've been battling away for quite a long time and nothing has come for them. Redan's right down the right-hand side. Looking for a great cross, dangerous cross coming in. Gets the ball back and... Oh, unlucky. What a nice run by Marcus Henderson for Redan there. Nice run, Adrian, right down the right side. And this, the Tucker player has to be tired by now. He's probably seen three or four different... Wave, uh, waves of players coming at him. And he had to chase down 40, 50 yards down the field. That's going to get very tiresome by the time this game is over. Going to the far post. Cleared out. Okay. Bringing the ball down. Knocked up to the front player. Out to the right-hand side. Number seven. For Casanova. Jeff Casanova. Jeff Casanova. You know, Adrian, we were speaking a little earlier about this nice crowd we had here tonight. And uh, we mentioned about some college coaches being present in the, in the group watching these young players play. I'm pleased to tell you that we have Coach Bill Barfield from the Citadel drop by our booth. And uh, Coach, what about this game? Well, I think the, the, the key to, to Redan's play uh, has been uh, in defense. They've, they have uh, not allowed Tucker to do anything because uh, every time they, the Tucker offense has got the ball, they've, they've defended tightly against them, kept their head down. And in the attack, uh, Redan, instead of playing, uh, as Adrian has mentioned several times, instead of playing 50-50 balls, uh, the strikers are checking back for the ball and showing for the midfielders to play the ball into them. And then the players play the direction they're facing and uh, it's uh, helped to make their team very successful and I think another thing too that Redan has going for it it has a they seem to have a number of, of uh, outstanding athletes not only are they good soccer players but the boys uh, 
have appear to have good speed and agility and of course uh, those things are necessary in any athletic event and, and particularly so in soccer well adrian i, I mean uh, bill i believe you're exactly right and of course we here in the atlanta area we are pleased as punch to have you coaches college coaches come down here and look at these young athletes that we have we feel are homegrown athletes here soccer players and we are pleased to have you come down here and uh, and look at these players Generally, Bill, uh, what have you found with respect to the quality of the soccer player in the Atlanta area? Well, uh, I recruit uh, basically in the uh, eastern United States. and, and uh, Great the shot there, by the way. Nicely saved by Jarvis. Go ahead, man. The, the, quality, the quality of the players in Atlanta is, uh, is equivalent to the, the players in northern Virginia, and, and that's, uh, northern Virginia is probably one of the best areas in, on the east coast to, to recruit the Washington, D.C. area. But... Every year in Atlanta, the players get better and better, and, and I think it's a credit probably to uh, uh, youth coaching. And, uh, you know, the, the high school coaches do a terrific job, but, uh, you know, they, they uh, these kids don't learn these things by playing high school soccer uh, two or three months out of the year. The, the, the clubs are doing a tremendous job in, in training these kids how to uh, do some of the things that they do. Well, thanks a terrible lot, Bill, for coming down chatting with us. I know you're busy with your, your books and your watching these players and uh, I know we've had some players from the Atlanta area play up there for the uh, at the Citadel. I remember a fine young man uh, out of Atlanta, a boy by the name of David Hobie. Didn't he play up there in the Citadel? Is yeah, he from he, Atlanta? Yeah, he sure was and he was a tremendous player, uh, all-conference player, a, a captain of, of our team and, and was, a, was a great leader and a, and a great player for us and uh, we were sorry to see him go when he when he graduated. Well, thank you very much, Coach uh, Barfield, for coming down and chatting with us on your busy schedule, and we wish you a lot of luck in your recruiting, and hopefully we'll see some more Georgia and Atlanta players up there at the Citadel. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, back to the uh, game. Holy winning the ball in midfield, going out. Tucker has got a throw in right on the halfway line. Number 25 for Tucker. Holy number 17. See, see that tremendous authoritative tackle there by that by that uh, Redan player, Avian. That was just a tremendous authority. The tackle was so so powerful. David Tackle. Robbins with a throw-in. Tackle was made by number 19, Peter Nicolini. Number 19, Peter Nicolini. That's oh, there's win. a great cross. Oh, oh that's an opportunity. Oh, too bad. A good effort there. Miller's up there. Uh, Goalkeeper missed your jump ball. Casanova's up there. A number of the players were up there. Tough luck there for Tucker. Chris Ball was up there even. The sweeper all the way back from his sweeper spot, number six. Everybody Chris wants Ball. to score. After 13 minutes of the second half, Adrian, eight shots and goals by Reed and one for Tucker. David Robbins again with a good tackle. Reed and all over the place. Dynamite ah, after one goal. Shot. Unlucky. That was guard jockey, Chris guard jockey. The freshman, fine player. You know, Bill Barfield was exactly right, Adrian. He said that not only did Redan have good soccer players, but had great athletes. Take Gordaki out there. Kicker for the football team, quarterback for the football team. And I would go on record right now, and I've said it already. I think he's next Kevin Butler in terms of being a kicker. Uh, I had Kevin Butler as a young soccer player, as a 16-year-old, and he was a tremendous kicker. You know, Kevin Butler being the kicker for Georgia. Mm -hmm. And, of course, I've had Gordaki now for four seasons. I think Gordaki is as strong and powerful, just, just as was uh, Kevin Butler. But he's exactly right. There's a number of great athletes. Wes Ball is a great football player for Redan, number two, playing soccer. So they're just good athletes. He's, Bill is exactly right. That's a good point. They are. You can see that they're all... Uh, oh, here's a here's good... Gordaki. Here's Gardaki. Oh, oh great Gardaki. goal. Chris Gardaki beats the man, goes inside, takes his shot, bangs it in the net. Goal number two for Chris Gardaki. Consistency paid off there for him. Two or three tackles he, he shook off. Tremendous goal. 
fine athletes, these uh, players. Not only they're good in soccer and various sports, they're tremendous conditioning, too. Seems they can run all day. Well, I've had Chris Godotti, like I say, for four seasons. He's one of the finest young men that I've ever coached, and he's just a fine young man to go with being a great athlete. There, as are the, all, of the, all of these boys. Redan is very lucky. Not only do they have a good athlete, but they've got a good caliber of boy, too. Not to say that Tucker doesn't. Tucker is overwhelmed by pure numbers here tonight. Tucker's got, like you say, Adrian, they've got 11 on the field and 3 or 4 on the bench. Over on the far side, Redan's got, what, about 40 or 50 players on the bench. Yeah. Just, just pure numerical... 40 or 50? Hang on there, Gene. They have about 40 <laughs> to 50 players on the varsity team at Redan. Wow. Well. So Tucker is just overwhelmed. They have also have got excellent athletes, but they cannot match the depth, the pure depth of, of Redan. And it's reflected in the score, and it'll get, as the game goes on, you've got to feel that Tucker's going to get more tired and more tired. Pick it up, Adrian. Well, it scores 5 nothing with 25 minutes to go. Redan 5, Tucker 0. Referee calls offside, I think it was just barely offside. Fans, if you enjoy watching this, these high school soccer games, and you're seeing some great athletes from both clubs out here tonight, write to Prime Cable, 2818 East Ponce de Leon Avenue, Decatur 30030. Tell those people, you've got it on the screen right now, you've got the address on the screen, write and tell those people that you enjoy it. We're seeing some great stuff, great athletes out here tonight. But you got to write and let them know because these things are, uh, stay on the air by, on the weight of the interest shown by the fans out there. And they don't know your interest unless you drop a note and write in. As a matter of fact, Adrian, I'm a little disappointed with the folks this year because last year I think we had a greater response, uh, letter response than this year. So they need to get a few letters in here so we can keep this great uh, soccer, high school soccer program on the air. Great turn on the ball there. Chris Ball, now here's Chris Ball. Number six, he's the sweeper, Adrian. The last two or three times, Chris Ball has been up the field trying to score. He's another fine player. Trying to Tucker. spark his team, trying to get something going. Yes, he is. I think Redan have also made another goalkeeping change. They've taken uh, Stokes' is back in goal. Stokes. You're getting good at keeping track of these 40, 50 players, Adrian. Yeah. Stokes Patterson. Now, here's your man, Chris Ball, again. He's involved in every aspect of the play. He's a sweeper. He's had a go from uh, this far out before. Let's yes. see if he puts Watch one on shot. goal. What oh, about that, okay. Brooks? A lovely shot by Chris Brooks. Probably a yard... Chris Brooks. I mean, Chris uh, <laughs> Ball. A great shot. Probably about a yard over the crossbar, but a nice shot. I like that Chris uh, Ball. He gives everything, you, everything you've got. This is the first time I've seen him play this week and last week. He's just a good player, isn't he? Yeah, very much so. Floating around. Holy yeah. just gets up and wins it. Got three players going in for this. This is Paul Gwynn. Referee calls a foul. Ed Thomas says you're on his back. And uh, free kick to Redan. Andy Kimball, number 14, is, a, is in now as a fullback. For oh, Redan. Oh, heads there. Number 11 for Tucker. That's Paul Gwynn. Back. Ho. Oh. Holding it too long, Adrian. A tad too long at times. Jim Jimmy Stone, number 14. Knocked out of bounds. Redan off again. See how fast they're running. Quick throwing. It must be very frustrating to have to keep up with all these fresh players. Number 21. Redan. Cassidy, Colin Cassidy. Colin's got a cast of some kind on his arm out there. That's oh, a nice awesome stuff there. Oh, down he goes. i got to believe you're going to see something special in a situation like this. This is prime location for a uh, uh, set play. Let's watch Gardaki. Let's see if Coach Harold Henderson lets him take a shot. This is Gardaki. And Allen. Allen and Gordaki, number 22. 22, Allen. Let's see what they do with the ball here. Mm, Allen's running on up on the ball. That's it's questioning the wall being 10 yards, I think. Referee Ed Thomas is going to take them back. All right, you've got Allen 
running on the ball, and you've got 11, Gordaki lurking in the background. Let's see. Fans, let's see what they do. Yeah. Oh, oh okay. there's the shot I was telling you about, Adrian. A bullet, but just wide of the right post. Yeah, he kept it low and hard. Goalkeeper didn't really see it until the last second. Would have been on goal. Might have been uh, one of the better goals we've seen tonight. You've seen some good ones tonight, though, Adrian. I think so. I think you liked that on a Boyd, did you not? Carol Boyd, number yeah, 12. And Armstrong was a nice goal, too. Kurt Armstrong, number 31. All right. That's Colin Cassidy. So, bumping. I thought he was bumping the back of Paul Gwynn a little bit, but uh, referee sees it otherwise. Referee Ed Thomas, the veteran referee. Low left fullback over here for Tucker. You know, we haven't really seen one of these long throwing uh, specialists. Maybe this, as we've seen in, in many other games, uh, Gene. Yeah. Where the ball's hitting the front and far post. Haven't seen it for a while. That's uh, Oh, that's a nice ball. Nice ball. Oh, oh, what a goal! goal. Oh. What a great goal! See what I mean about the boy shot? Ooh. You don't see the ball. Let me tell you a story about uh, young Gordaki. We had a tryout a year ago for a goalie tryout, and we brought this young man, <laughs> young man out to try out who has a reputation being a good goalkeeper. Unfortunately, he had to face Gordaki first. The first shot Gordaki shot bent his hands back. The goalkeeper said he wasn't going to try out anymore. He came back a, a week later, and lo and behold, who was it again? But Gordaki taking the first shot on the game. Same thing happened to his hand. We didn't see the goalkeeper anymore. Mm. He's that strong a shot. He's a remarkable shot. Three goals for Christopher Gordaki. i got to believe for a person who's been trained in field goals and things like that, they'd have a hard time converting over because they're you know, leaning back to put the ball over the uh, field goal. Players like that have got to uh, get it into the head to get the body over it to keep it low you're, and hard. You're exactly right. When he would come back to play with us after playing his football, it took a full month to get him back into kicking the ball soccer in the correct uh, form for a soccer player because he was kicking it high all over the place. Mm -hmm. But he's such an athlete, he could adjust rather quickly and uh, he's just an amazing young man. Scores 6 nothing in favor of Reed and All right, we got three goals by Gardaki, one by Armstrong, one by Marcus Henderson, and one by Hartwick. There's your six goals, six to nothing. Redan leading, Redan in the white. Tucker in the crimson. Gene, hypothetic, hypothetically speaking, if the score holds up and Redan do go on to win this game, what will be the uh, records of the two teams playing tonight? The records of the, well, I don't know, I can't pinpoint down the record of uh, Tucker because they've had a few losses, so that would put them out of the out of the runoff chances. But let me tell you what it does do. It creates an interesting situation because here we go on the run here. This is uh, Henderson turning the ball in. Out comes Ray Jarvis, who's had a very busy night tonight, plucking the ball out of the back of the net through no fault of his own. It's just an overwhelming power of, of Redan. But what it does is it puts us into the final week with Clarkson unbeaten, and Redan and Lysoni with exactly the same record. So that's what it does. Re uh. Number 1, Greg Harris knocks the ball out wide to the left. A nice chip ball into space. Good tackle. Two Redan players going for the ball and miss. Holy on the ball, keep it on to it. Unlucky. Chadwick, make a look at this run by De by David Chadwick's boy Andrew. Nice run. I wonder if old David Chadwick, the old professional soccer player, is here tonight watching this game. Adrian, mm -hmm. do you have any information as to whether or not he's here tonight? I have really no idea. Uh, Fans will remember David, as we said before, he was the soccer. He was the coach of the Atlanta Chiefs. 
and had a very successful indoor season with the Atlanta Chiefs when they were here indoor. Then he came back on this very stadium, Adrian, with the DeKalb Generals. He was the coach of the Generals. Right here at this day, uh, they played right here. This was their home field. Uh, David is now back living in Atlanta after stints with uh, Ma the Minnesota Strikers. Strikers as the coach of the Strikers. Oh, this oh, is a nice build up. Run. A little too much there, I think. Beat his man quite well, but left himself a bit too exposed. That was Pat Connick, the fullback. Now, see, you're talking about athletes like Coach Bill Barfield was saying. Look at that lovely run from the from Pat Connick. He's the fullback way back here. Ran, what, 50, 40 yards down the field with the ball and a nice run from the back. I got, I got to believe with that many players out there on Redan's team, when you do get the opportunity to get forward, you certainly take it. That's low, playing left fullback there and clear that ball out. Tinker Small, throwing the ball in. Tinker, there's, his father is uh, another person of the Chiefs days. Ken Small, the marketing director of the Atlanta Chiefs. Now has his own company here in Atlanta, Ken Small Marketing. That's right, he was very active in soccer for years. Great tradition over here at the uh, Redan, great soccer tradition. You think of the Mike Minshews and the Aaron Blakeneys and all those great players that have gone on from Redan into college and doing very well for themselves. And just great. But you know, interestingly enough, uh, Clarkson beat oh, that's Reed and Adrian about a month ago, three to two, in one of the best soccer games, boys soccer games I've ever seen. Really? It was a tremendous game. Went into double overtime, and Clarkson finally won it with 30 seconds to go. Tremendous three to two win. The only blemish on Reed Ann's record, other than the tie with Lithonia. Redan certainly has to be one of the uh, candidates for the uh, title this year, don't you think? All right, we got a run here. But it's dropped back. You see how calmly it's dropped back by the defensive players. That Tinker Small, Connick, Pat Connick dropping it back. Look at this run right now by Chadwick. This is uh, Andrew Chadwick. Boom! Andrew has very nice skills, and he runs very well, as you see, with the ball. He does have a, a slight problem, and that is finishing. You've seen him now make two or three nice runs in the last five or ten minutes. He has little problems finishing. If he ever gets that, if he can ever get control of finishing, he is going to be a superb talent. Not that he is not now, but he is going to be a superb talent. Out goes Chadwick. He goes out. Some substitutions being made by Redan. 13 minutes to go. 6 to nothing. And the big crowd is now somewhat silent as they... Subdued. Subdued as the, as the game obviously seems to be going Redan's way. Well, the people like to see goals. They've seen them tonight, Adrian. Six beauties, I think. Holy still think Holy holds on to the ball a little <laughs> too long. That's all right, Holy, you're a good player nonetheless. Plays well. But you see the problem is if you if you hold on to the ball too long with, with people crowding around you, it makes it just that much difficult to do anything with you it. You do it you do it draw attention. You sure do. Redan um, took it still battling away, I, I think. A couple of players out there, that, you know, you can see that they haven't really thrown in the towel. They do battle until the final whistle. And that's a good sign. Ball going out of bounds over here on the Tucker side. Quick throwing all the way down the line. 
across the mouth of the goal. That was Bixler. Bixler playing right wing now for... Playing right wing for Redan now. watch this action now as you see these redamp players just literally run all over the field and Tucker gamely trying to stay with him and we must have 14 very tired Tucker players on the field 11 very tired Tucker players out there in the field Adrian. we're down now to 11 minutes and 22 seconds Redan leading six to nothing We're trying to get some kind of a read now on the players that read in have in the game. Here's a question for you, Gene O'Brien. With such a big game looming right up, right in front of uh, Redan tomorrow, what advice, since you've done so much coaching with youth players, what advice would you tell these Redan players to do tonight in order to, to uh, generate um, strength or uh, whatever for the big game tomorrow? Straight home, straight to bed, and good meal tonight? Well, there's no question about it. You don't want them running out at 2 and 3 o'clock in the morning, that's for sure. I've not, as a coach, I've never appreciated that kind of uh, lack of discipline by players. You know, big games on the next day and they're out running around 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning. Get on home and get a good night's rest. And then forget this game, put it behind you, because this game is history. When they, In another 10 minutes, this game is history. And the next big hurdle is the game against Stone Mountain. It's a game they got to win. It's as simple as that. Referees call the penalty kick. Call the penalty kick. Redown player coming through and seemingly his legs were taken out from un under him. Referee was right on top. Taking the penalty kick is Maya. Number four. Danny Maya. Where's he going to put it? Oh, oh missed, it. missed it completely. Now let me tell you a funny a little story about Danny Meyer. Danny Meyer is a defender. And probably the very thought of being up there in front of a goal and having a chance to take a shot at the goal so bamboozled him, he just shot that ball wide right. Danny Meyer. Danny Meyer also going out of the uh, game with uh, five or six substitutions. Uh, All righty, we've got players coming in and out now for both teams as we're winding down with nine minutes left to go. I'm looking out there, and I'm going to use one of your favorite expressions, Adrian Brooks. There's a lot of tired legs on that Tucker team. No question about it, Gene. <laughs> That's Paul Gwynn, number 11. He's played hard. Yeah, he's had a tough game tonight. Yes, Baffled he away. He's, he's given it all he could give it, and... Uh, Here he is taking the free kick. Paul Gwynn. Nice, nice ball. deep cross coming in. Oh, yeah. it's a goal! It's a goal from a ball by Paul Gwynn. We were just talking a moment ago about Only. what a... Holy. Holy scores. What a nice uh, game that Gwynn, or what a hard game he's had. And Holy is there to connect with the ball and nod it into the net. Seven goals tonight, Adrian Brooks. For those folks that like goals in their soccer, they've had them tonight. <laughs> they certainly have. Tremendous uh, goal coming over. One of them crosses that comes in that's sort of a daring cross for the goalkeeper. Is he going to come or isn't he? Goalkeeper decided to stay on his line. Ball came flying across and Holy got up above the rest of the pack and put it down low and into the back of the net. 
Well, that won't be of too much uh, consolation to Tucker, but at least it's, they broke the ice, Adrian, and they can go home and say they scored. Well, it's nice to see them score. Yeah, you don't like those shutouts. They sure don't. Okay, let's see what's going to happen on this. Ball's played into midfield. Okay, we've got a quick counterattack. That's, that's Paul Gwynn again, number 11. Hard charge out there on that side by both players. Referee's blowing hard. Oh, we got a player down, Adrian. Looks let's to be down in a lot of pain, too. Yes, indeed. Let's get, let's get to see if we can get that gentleman's number. He seems like he may be hurting rather badly here. We've got the glasses on him now, Adrian. We'll see if we can find out who that young man is. Play has stopped at the moment. Seems to be a, an injury down on the field. Well, we certainly hope that young man has not hurt that too badly. I don't like the way he's, he's moving around down there, Adrian. Everybody's crowded around him. Uh, still can't see. We're trying to see who that... There you see this huge crowd we have here tonight. What a great crowd. What a great crowd we have here tonight. Adrian. I don't know if you can notice, but the person in the red there is the Stone Mountain coach, Bob Rumble, here for a very apparent reason. He sure is. That's Bob Rumble in the red uh, sweatsuit there. Doing he's a little scouting. To, yeah, he's here scouting the game, big game he has with Redan tomorrow. Number seven, the boy down is Spencer Morrison, a junior halfback. Looks to be a very bad injury. It's something that all soccer players or all athletes, anybody really hates to see things like this happen. Putting an inflatable cast on his leg, our spotter tells us, Adrian, and that does not does not bode too well for the young man. Let's hope it's nothing serious. Adrian, the... Uh, this is something that you really never like to see, Gene, and, and uh, very, very sad things like this. A young player ran his heart out tonight and uh, really had a good game. Spencer Morrison, a junior. You see trainers out there and something that's very, very sad. You see part of the uh, Redan squad on the sideline. And as the camera pans, you'll see the number of players. Look at all those players on the sideline. You can see the picture of all those Redan players. This we've been telling you about the huge squad that Redan has, and these are all varsity players. I think they're in the number in about the 40 or 45. And Adrian, like we said so much, so often tonight, that has to be an.